Praise the Lord. How many of you are experiencing the presence of God this morning? Can we praise God? Let us continue to experience the presence of God in this place. There are two types of churches when I look at it. The one is the lake churches where there is no inflow or the outflow. There is not much growth there. There is not much hope there. Then there is a river church. There is inflow and outflow. There are living creatures there. There is life there. I'm glad that this morning I'm part of a living church. Can you praise God? Part of a living church is the greatest thing. That is your extended family. This morning, let us feel the presence of God that you are connected to the family of God, the body of Christ. That is the family which is everlasting. That is the only one which is eternal. I've been traveling to many churches in the past uh, 25 years or so. One thing I noticed in all this trip is Sunday morning is the time of celebration for God's people. What God has done to us. That somehow we developed a consumer mind also. Which means you are here to have a wonderful time of worship and listen to a good message. That's what most people are looking for. Nothing wrong with that. That should be the minimum. But the most important thing when we come in the presence of God is worship God in spirit and truth. Thus, when you leave, you are not going to critique the message. You take the message, how I can be obedient for the whole week for the message that you heard. When you walk in that level, in a sequential level every week, when you apply those 50 points at least you heard for the 50 weeks or so, let me tell you, your life will be different. You will be not only empowered, you will be transformed to his likeness. This morning I am with my wife Suja. I know that uh, many of her relatives are here in this church. Thus I had uh, visited uh, this church I think uh, several years back uh, when Pastor Abraham was here. Thus uh, good to see a lot of people. And also more than anything for the last uh, few years we've been connected more to this church because there are some key significant people, part of our leadership team is also belong to this church. Can we praise God? Amen. I don't know, it's randomly connect, connected. That is also God's plan. Especially uh, Minu, uh, Dr. Minu George is our national youth coordinator. And we met him, I know him and he knows me, but we didn't have much connection. I've been going to, with my daughter to, um, uh, uh, Dallas, somehow we met in an airport transit. We said hello. Then while praying for a youth coordinator for this conference, his name came. He accepted graciously. I know he's a very busy person as a medical doctor. I appreciate his commitment. And also Sister Rashma Thomas, being very actively involved in the ladies' empowerment and impact every month. Thank God. Not only that, we have uh, Brother Finney Matthew. I think he's the most influential person I can think of in this city. We thank God for his commitment. Um, good to see uh, Pastor Matthew family again this morning, uh, worshiping together. And uh, great support from the Eastern region uh, with the servant of God. Every Tuesday, he being part of the prayer event. He did a lot of commitment for that. And also... Uh, good to see Abraham Angle as well as uh, many others. This is the time we are connected more than the physical relationship. Spiritual relationship matters most in the body of Christ. Therefore, my, I'd like to focus in the next few minutes. You are empowered for great things. You have to believe that. Before I forget, I want to extend all of you to the Boston Conference. 
this is a conference with lot of prayers lot of expectations i don't want to be selfish as i invite let's pray for all four conferences the vision god has laid us empowered to transform go to different churches and cities spark the holy spirit spark people then the holy spirit will take control of it if i can influence thousand families that will do the job that's what is happening before the conference and after the conference is more important than what happens on the 3 4 days do you believe it Amen. i believe it preparing generation for the whole year through every week every month through different ways with the best anointed servants of god let me tell you god will take care of the conference thus i am i know that a significant number of people are coming to boston but i want to extend invitation to all of you not only to bless the conference be part of this memorable event that god is going to do for a greater revival in our generation i know sometimes it's expensive if you honor god god will honor you with that let's stand to the word of god this morning i like to read a verse from the bible taken from ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 ephesians chapter 20 verse 20 and 21 now all glory to god who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think we often led by feelings and that feelings if it is not tempered by the holy spirit what happens this feelings becomes fears of our life and the way devil operates in our head is through lies and deception thus we know what is going to happen tomorrow for most of us but somehow we have a fear which is controlled by our feelings that leads into a form of an anxiety and depression that's a reality even lot of at least one third of the believers are going through this process that some people take control of these thoughts through distancing or dissociating some people deny it deny the problem but the way holy spirit works completely different instead of fear he has given us faith we are not led by feelings we are led by faith in the lord jesus christ faith is a weapon to counter us against any anxiety when we are controlled by feelings and fears that leads into certain form of powerlessness in our life a certain form of weakness in our life not only that it leads into a form of hatred hatred toward others it may start with your own spouse parents children church members colleagues supervisors it takes a much higher level but when you are controlled by the holy spirit you won't hate anyone you start loving people unconditionally and sacrificially that's how god operates that's how the holy spirit works this is a checklist for us when we are controlled by our emotions and feelings that will leads into fear a form of powerlessness in our life eventually it leads into out of control we lose our sound mind that god has given you that's why apostle paul says god has not given us a spirit of fear but he has given you something this morning spirit of power spirit of love spirit of sound mind something to counteract your mental physical and spiritual level to counteract your powerlessness spirit of power to counteract every form of hatred spirit of unconditional love to counteract every kind of out of order life a sound mind 
more than any psychiatric medication, more than any counseling that you can think of. Let me tell you, this is the way godly people are empowered and transformed. In the Bible, you can see two significant people who have been transformed by the renewal of the mind. But the reality is, the classic example I can think about is, take a piece of raw iron. Do you know what is the cost of one kilogram or one pound iron? Less than $50. But if it is transformed into horseshoe, it costs $200. But if it's turned into needles, sewing needles, it will be close to $100,000 even. Because that you can make thousands and thousands of needles out of that. But if you make gears and all kinds of missionary parts, it may be even $5 million. But there are lesser guided surgical instruments you can make out of it. It will be $15 million. What does that mean? Our life sometimes like the piece of iron. When you are controlled by the Holy Spirit, you develop insight, vision, empowerment, ultimately the true transformation that God can use you as a vessel for his purpose. In the churches, when I look at many are like rusting lions. But until you are renewed and transformed, you cannot be useful for the kingdom. Thus, this morning, don't put your life in a showcase. Don't feel being covered with all the problems that you are going on. Challenge it. Either God will give you the grace to challenge the problem or he'll, he will take away the problem. Something needs to happen. Don't stop your life with everything that goes around you. But three types of enemies are struggling. That's we need to be very careful. The first one is the visible enemy, the world system, which is the most influential thing in our life. Something we valued most, especially those who are immigrated to USA, this world system has a direct interface to your spiritual life. The second one is the invisible enemy, the devil and the demonic spirits, which people are ignoring somehow, which is real. Day and night, to take away young people from the church, this invisible, invisible enemy is working. Be sensitive. And there is an inward enemy which is working with our thoughts. When your mind is not empowered, renewed or transformed or focused, we unconsciously and subconsciously yield to this enemy. Sometimes we lose our sensitivity. Therefore, we need to be very careful to battle against these three enemies. I like to focus on three things this morning. With everything that's going around us. What Jesus taught us. The first and the foremost is, even for an empowerment, even for a transformation, the first step that Jesus taught us, self-denial. It looks very unconventional. In an empowerment message, always people talk about positive things. But Jesus taught us to be empowered and transformed in our life. Self-denial comes first. Which means you have to empty yourself. You can't, God cannot help you. You cannot transform yourself until we empty what is already inside of us. That's why Jesus told his disciples... Who are wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Emptying ourselves is the biggest challenge. Let me tell you, that is the raw material for your transformation. Once you are emptied, things go rapidly. There are people in, in Christian walk not able to empty some of the things that they are holding. It can be their intellectual knowledge. It can be their certain form of belief or tradition or culture. Whatever it is, there are issues in both cultures when I look at it. Some traditional impediments from our own, church, our own culture. 
there are more problems in the hosting culture too therefore until we are renewed and transformed and empty ourselves it is impossible to fill us and transform us even there are if you look at the greatest privilege in this nation we have freedom of speech we have freedom of worship we have freedom from wants but people are struggling from freedom from fear thus don't use the freedom of speech that we have to be critical on others this freedom to be used to liberate other people to empower other people and transform to the likeness of Christ that is this freedom is given second one is when you have freedom of worship many regions of the world are going through persecution thus when you have freedom of worship if you don't worship you may lose that freedom very soon that don't take it granted same thing when we have freedom from wants especially those who are in the country our basic needs are met be considerate to other people those who don't have the same privilege but many of our families are going through a form of fear an irrational fear how we can deal with this one way to do is empowerment malayalathil shakti gerikuva the people who do not feel motivated there is a whole generation is emerging in our generation now that is after the covid this is real so search shows that almost 60 percentage of the christians who were in the church don't feel going church back it's called dechurched generation they are not against church i can watch online i can listen message from another church or this church no big deal mentality eventually they are fading away from faith and god and detach detached from the church and young people are affected more do you know what you have to do the research also shows that if someone personally connect with them have some friendship and just invite them back to church most of them will come back because they need this is like a dead vehicle now someone has to push them empower them and see the value of going to church because they are struggling how many of you can do that there are people in the neighborhood somehow they feel that church is not a place for them it is through your testimony you make them come back same thing in the body of christ they have been praying for a lot of problems they don't see the answer they are living in fear many times as a counselor i see people with dead and cross road kind of thing it's very i don't want to give false hope also maybe the death bed it can be a, a, a broken family a, maybe the divorce thing god spoke to me very careful clearly on an occasion where i didn't have any answer i don't know when what to pray for that situation either god will give you grace or he will transform that situation there is nothing in between if you trust in the lord he will never put you into shame he will give you the courage he will give you the strength he will sh- show you the path to go thus people who are going through all kinds of struggles and problems we must help those people but some of the hindering path for this empowerment is a traditional mind which is confounded with our culture and upbringing then there is a deconstruction mind which is somehow believe that everything that belief is false we need to restart again that is not from god or the bible what we need a spirit filled empowered life this morning that will lead you into truth not just facts the fundamental difference between facts and the truth when you look at from a scientific perspective facts can change from time to time but truth will never change even science cannot reach to the level of truth the same people there is a limit how much you can believe your bp today can be 100 tomorrow it can be 150 weather may change even histories are changing lot of things change but the word of god will never change thus we are holding something at a higher level 
not even comparable with the feelings not with the facts but the ultimate truth the word of god the voice of god the plan of god the counsel of god that can empower you and transform you this morning we need to wholeheartedly put our faith in the word of god that alone can empower us thus don't be controlled by feelings or facts but put your faith in god the bible clearly says do not be conformed to this world that is one form of enemy become but be transformed according to the renewal of your mind do you know the outcome of that you get the best counsel how i know you will know the perfect complete pleasing will of god that is the best counsel that you can got from god perfect complete pleasing will can you think anything beyond that the best advice you can get the as you hear the word of god this morning the holy spirit is renewing your mind but it is your will that help you to transform this renewal into a blessed empowered life that there is a will that needs to play in your life thus at the same time the flesh is also at work the puritan pastor once said till sin be bitter christ will not be sweet that's a tough one until sin you feel bitter christ will not be part of your life it's a tough puritan doctrine of holiness if you read the literature of jonathan edward and all these people a legacy you can receive how they are able to experience holiness of god that became a predictor of god's power and god's movement of evangelization if you look at the whole revival for the last 300 years the first and the foremost thing is a group of people who are hungry for word of god that leads into form of holiness movement then the holy spirit revolution that take the word of god to the next level even such kind of revival can happen when you follow the same process holiness holy spirit then a holy movement of the proclamation of the gospel the second point i want to bring this morning is be filled with the holy spirit first one is empty ourselves and i want to bring one important character from the bible this morning daniel he did three things he and his team and the friends to be empowered and transformed the first and the foremost thing is taming our appetite especially in this country you can have any food any tv programs any kind of entertainment you can have lot of freedom daniel's life was something same he had the freedom to eat whatever he wants let me tell you the greatest and the powerful empowerment happens when you tame your appetite when how much you eat that can that determines your discipline right what you watch how you spend your money where you spend your money that shows your appetite and the second one is going beyond your knowledge i'm not reading the verses you are familiar with that when you are taming your appetite daniel resolved not to defile with the things of the of the world but when you look at the second one they got into a troubled situation he declared prayer finally he got the revelation even though daniel and daniel's friends had knowledge wisdom daniel has only the revelation from god some of your friends may have knowledge of the word of god in a time of crisis you have to go beyond your knowledge you need to be experiencing the holy spirit anointing that will lead you the right way that will give you the precise words how to respond sometimes not to say something that is how the holy spirit operate 
our communication become controlled by the spirit of god not by our feelings not by our fears not by external environment but the spirit in spirit holy spirit interface will control your heart that control your tank therefore the words that you speak will be authoritative powerful that will empower edify other people is it amazing but there will be situation in life like fiery furnace you've been following god you've been filled with the holy spirit now come to the reality you are before the fire you have only few minutes if you make a de- don't make a decision you are pretty done what how are you going to take such how you can be empowered in a such a moment a lot of people compromise but here you can say that first they thought that our god will help us daniel chapter 3 verse 16 says they also believe sadrak mesak abednego the god that they serve will help them but they come to a point in the last part it's possible there's a 50 50 chance now they may get into fire furnace they declared even if it is fire we are not going to bow down before this idol that is genuine faith not depend on your job not de- depend on your healing not depend on anything no condition attached i am not going to compromise before this living god you will see the fourth person emerging let me tell you he will help you he will never forsake you this morning anybody is discouraged in the prayer in your family life in your ministry life he will tell you i will be with you you learn to trust him no matter what god will give you the power he will give you the love he will give you the discipline to stand firm and the third point i want to bring this morning is every opportunity even in the fiery furnace is an opportunity to be a missionary if you look at what happened for sadrak mesak and abednego it become the greatest opportunity to witness a true living god the god of israel to a wicked king the most powerful king his mind changed the policy become the nations law changed daniel's sadrak mesak abednego's god is the real god that is mission sometimes it's not a conventional way of preaching and teaching god can use you in in your daily life to witness his truth to a gentile world thus i just want to conclude here with three things how many of you want to empty yourself a form of self denial completely surrendering before god it's it is the greatest the toughest thing that you and that's the greatest advantage being christian if you are denying yourself he can use you to fill the holy spirit in you because it's a holy spirit and you will be a useful vessel for the kingdom like gideon emptied himself put in the empty vessel he put that fire inside that empty vessel finally blowing the trumpet heavenly father we thank you and praise the lord this morning lord the message that we shared this morning help us to empty our life whatever tormenting things negative feelings things which is contrary to the word of god lord help us to empty our life lord you fill us with your spirit the holy spirit so that we can have an empowered life coming out of fear any helplessness and serving god with faith and clarity to bring forth your gospel in a wicked world thank you lord for ministering to our hearts thank you lord for renewing our hearts thank you lord for empowering us help us to be transformed to your likeness in jesus name i pray amen god bless you with this words